welcome back. We're just, uh, we found ourselves up in Presque Isle, Maine today, running some errands. We had to pick up some things at Lowe's, and so I decided to bring my laundry up to the laundromat here. And I did that while Jason went shopping. And we decided while we're out this afternoon, why not head over to Canada? We're right near the border. We haven't explored the little towns that are right across the border from Presque Isle yet. Grand Falls, Perth Andover, Woodstock. So we're gonna just do uh, a little three hour tour here uh, through Canada. So thanks for coming along. Oh, where are you going? So there are several different places you can cross the Canadian border in this part of Aroostook County. We are going to go up north of Presque Isle through Caribou, Maine, up to the town of Van Buren, and we'll cross over the border there into the town of St. Leonard. Van Buren border crossing now. I've never crossed here. Have you, Jace? Been years if I had. It was. Wait, wait, wait. And right across the river from here is the town of St. Leonard. Um, we have decided that now that we're in northern Maine, we're going to keep our passports in the truck at all times. That way, if we're out and we decide that we want to pop over to Canada, we're all ready to go. Oh, what's going on down here? Party down there. A little fun fair. <laughs> International fun fair. <laughs> Cute. It looks like we're not crossing the border until we get on the other side of the river. The river is the border. The river is the border. Right down in the middle. All right, we're from the U.S. And now, kilometers per hour, that's how you know you're in Canada. Wait, and it's an hour later now. Uh, let's see, where do I need to go? Stop, it's in a stop sign right here. Yeah, and then do I turn, I turn that way. You do? Yeah, I'm in the car. Okay. You need to read the signs more carefully. I'm not driving, so you need to read the signs. Oh, I got it. Did we cross here? No, I don't think I ever had that. Oh, here's all the New Brunswick uh, scenic routes. We've talked about this before, but New Brunswick has such a nice system of scenic drives, and they've got these five different symbols. Um, of the drives that are around the province. So we'll see if, I don't know if we're gonna be on any today, but we'll keep an eye out for these symbols. The town of St. Leonard is right across the river from Van Buren. Uh, just a little village of 1,300 people. We've never been here before. We're gonna see if we can find a little main street or something, some kind of a downtown, but it looks very cute so far. Oh. much to see in St. Leonard, but it looks like they have some art installation pieces there um, that are spread all around the town. And now we're going to head south down to the larger town of Grand Falls. We're driving along the St. John River, and you can see that Maine is just across the river here. We have driven the St. John Valley Scenic Byway. Uh, last year or so, we did a video on doing the Maine side of the St. John Valley, which was beautiful. We went all the way up to Fort Kent um, and over to the Allagash Wilderness Waterway, and it was a great trip in Maine. So I'll link that video at the end of this one if you want to see more. Now, today we're doing St. John Valley on the Canadian side. The worst welcome town welcome sign I ever saw. I can't read it at all. I still can't read it. Welcome to Grand Falls. <laughs> I pronounce S A U T Sa. So, Grand Sioux so. Restaurant. That's how they pronounce it in Michigan, anyway. I don't know what's the same here. What's Giant Tiger? We've seen that store. We've seen it all the time. Yes, you have. I 
we literally, they were, they even pointed it out when we were in Halifax, but they were there. It's, it's, it's everything. You're funny. Now you're, next year you're gonna tell me you haven't seen the Jean Coteau. Of course I've seen Jean, Jean Coteau there everywhere. Bandstand. Next you'll have me believe. You guys, we came into the visitor center at Grand Falls because we want to see the waterfall and we're in the little gift shop and look what we found. We have been looking for these forever. My mother bought us a set of lobster butter um, dishes years ago, decades ago from Nova Scotia and we lost one of the holder, candle holders for it. And I think we're also missing one of the little lobster bowls. So every time we go to Canada, I keep my eyes peeled for them. I've never seen them since. And this one doesn't match exactly, but it's very, it's the closest one I've ever seen. So we're gonna get one. How exciting. <laughs> are beautiful and majestic but Jason is just reading that this is actually a very low water level in the spring um, it's 90% of uh, Niagara Falls so 90% of the volume that goes through Niagara Falls also comes through here and it will get the water line will get way up to here to where this rock ledge is Wow So you might have seen we're driving along the Fiddlehead scenic route here in New Brunswick. We're going to make a little detour now uh, away from the river and we'll go over to a little town called Plaster Rock because we want to see the largest fiddlehead in the world. There's lots of largest things in the world in New Brunswick. But once we get over there, we should be able to meet up with the mountain scenic route, which we've never driven before. Why is there Home of the World Pond the Hockey Championship. World, oh, Pond Hockey Championship. Okay. It's, and welcome to the world's largest fiddle Says it? It does on that other time. Pizza hunting special lures is how they had the, the word uh. clustered. <laughs> when it really was pizza special and hunting lures. Uh -huh. They were on top of each other with a big giant space between them. What should have been together? Pizza hunting, special lures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we made it. We made it to the largest fiddleheads in the world in Plaster Rock, New Brunswick. I'll tell you a secret. We were a little worried <laughs> because Google Maps says that this site was permanently closed and there were no recent reviews of it. But I wanted to come out here anyway. It wasn't that long of a drive and we wanted to get onto the mountain scenic route, which we have now. Um, and we pulled into town and here they are. I don't know why Google Maps says it's closed, but we're going to fix that. We often uh, put in edits to Google Maps for things that we find, especially in very rural out of the way areas. There's often mislabeled roads or, um, you know, the road is really closed. When Google Maps says it's open, it says that things are closed when they're not a holdover from COVID. So we like to fix those things as we go around the country. You may or may not know that fiddleheads are J one of Jason's favorite foods. He's often said that if he had to choose a last meal, it would be lobster and fiddleheads. 
Now, if you don't know what fiddleheads are, they're the uh, unfurled heads of ferns, very young ferns that grow along rivers or watery areas. Uh, and in the spring, you can pick those heads and boil them up and eat them. Um, sometimes they can cause people a little bit of uh, d digestive distress, and that's what happens to me when I eat them. I, I can't really eat them anymore, but Jason loves them. <laughs> There he is. I'm sure the town has a name for him. He needs a new paddle. Yeah. Especially if he goes up that one creek I've heard so much about. <laughs> All right, we're going to drive down the mountain scenic route a little ways to the town of Perth Andover. We're going to stop there for dinner because we were trying to make it to Woodstock for dinner, but because it's an hour later here, it's already after eight o'clock and we're afraid that these little towns um, are going to close down early. So we want to make sure we get some dinner. We're driving along the Tabique River here um, on the mountain scenic route and there's a nice ATV trail that goes right along the river here. Uh, but I see that we're just passing a sign here that the mountain scenic route is ending. So we've only done a little tiny bit of the southern end of it. We're excited to come back to New Brunswick on a different trip to do the northern uh, mountain scenic trail that goes all around the northern border of New Brunswick and through that Appalachian mountain range. Yeah. Uh, struck out with pizza. Looks like they're working on the grocery store plaza. This, oh, this place is open in Woodstock. I just want to pick it. All right, we'll go to the next town. Well, we finally found an open pizza restaurant. We're gonna try out Greco's. It seems to be uh, just a fast food Canadian pizza chain. We've never tried it before. So we always like to try um, non-American chains when we're in Canada and uh, we were hoping to explore Woodstock a little bit more because it is the closest Canadian town to our land south of Holton. It's only about 45 minutes to get over here and it's even though it's about the same population as Holton, it seems to have much more shopping here. They must be catering to a, a wider area of small towns here. So some Saturday afternoon I would just want to come over here and explore all of the shopping the grocery stores, the Canadian Tire, the Walmart, and then just see what's over here. Because often when we go to Google Maps and search for restaurants or shopping or you know specific things that we want, it'll give us results in Woodstock, New Brunswick, which we always laugh because like we're not going to Canada to buy this thing. But it is so close and we have the passports in the truck. Maybe we should think of it as a, a more viable option when we need things that are not immediately in Holton. So uh, if, if we ever get back over here to Woodstock, we'll take you along. <laughs> <laughs> there she is. We're out later than we originally planned. We didn't have any lights on. Okay. Uh, fishing out here on my side. Yeah, we're good. Look at that. That's the US and Canada. <laughs> so fun. Well, it's a different day, but we're back in Canada. We were driving south of Holton with some friends uh, who were visiting for the day, and we thought, let's go back the long way and go through Canada. So we've never crossed here at the Fosterville crossing. It's a very, very small crossing. Um, and we are just going over because we want to see if we can find the other side of Lincoln Road, Maine. So in a previous video, a few years ago, when we were exploring in the Holton area here, we discovered that Lincoln Road runs right along the border of Canada. And in fact, there's just a field on one side and then a dirt road. And on the other side is another field and that is Canada. There's a sparse um, border there that has just some stanchions on it that say US and Canada. There's no crossings there. Uh, so there's a road on the Canadian side that's just on the other side of a fence and there's a house right there on the border and we've always said we need to go over to Canada and find where that is so we can stand on the other side of the border that we love to visit. So we're going to see if we can find that this afternoon just for a late, uh, late afternoon drive. It is really pretty and interesting on this, this side of the border. <laughs> it's a little more built up. I think there's more population here, or at least it's closer to population. 
Really nice lake houses here. Yeah. Nice provincial park we just passed back there with the yeah. beach and amenities. So we found it, this dirt road, Union Corner, can, uh, New Brunswick, is right across the border from Lincoln Road, Maine, which is right here. This business is in Maine. That pupper and over there is in Maine. <laughs> <laughs> the wagon puppy. Tail. It's a little puppy. And uh, this is a border stanchion, an old one indicating the border between US and Canada. We've been wanting to come over here for so long. This is so fun. And we could just walk right there into Maine. We started to drive away, but we see that there's a sign half hidden by greenery over here. Let's see what it says. Just step over the dark part. United States boundary vehicles, pedestrians, arrival, entry prohibited. There you go. Don't go through the bushes, kids. Not allowed. And here's another stanchion. That's a little bigger. <laughs> Pretty crazy. We made it back to Woodstock, New Brunswick just before sunset. Let's see if we can drive around the town and show you a little bit since we didn't get to do it the other night. does feel like a very large town, much larger than it actually is, I think. Population is only about 5,200 here, but it feels like a substantial shopping and neighborhood district. Um, so we're just pulling over here to get a little snack. Even though there is a lot of stores and shopping here, I don't, we were just saying that I don't know we would actually come over here to shop for specific things because then you still have to factor in that you have to take it back across the borders. and. Is it going to be cheaper over here? Um, so all of that, you know, taken into account, probably actually wouldn't use it, but it's so nice to know that it's here. <laughs> well, maybe I spoke too soon because there are some things that they sell in Canada that, that they don't sell in the U.S., including these Kashi bars. I love Kashi bars. They're my favorite granola bar, and they recently stopped selling them in the United States, maybe last year, and I was so bummed out. I've never found another one that I like as much, and I just recently found when we were on our Newfoundland trip that they do sell them in Canada. So. Woodstock grocery stores. I am coming to stock up here before we leave Maine in September. Thank you for carrying my favorite granola bars. All right, I think we're done. Thanks for coming along to Canada with us this week. I hope you enjoyed our shenanigans and seeing some little towns and uh, coming along for some new adventures in New Brunswick. Until next week, I hope you have a great week. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.